YouTube, it's Multiplier here to show you how to do the Dead Mouse pluck, the Dead Mouse lead, the Dead Mouse synth sound that he does in a lot of his tracks. Let me show you what it sounds like and then I'll explain how to make it. It's nice and simple, don't worry, let me show you. Then it, then it just loops through. Classic Dead Mouse. If it sounds a lot like Dead Mouse, that is because Dead Mouse basically wrote this entire thing. He wrote the arpeggio for a sample pack he put out on Splice Sounds. Therefore, musically, the arpeggio is something that Joel wrote himself. And then also the synthesizer settings in Serum, the effects and all that sort of stuff is exactly what he did in a video where he explained how he made a specific sound. I will link it below, don't worry. What I'm saying is this is exactly the setup he uses. And if you don't believe me, check out the link below where he explains it all. However, he glosses over a few important concepts, and that's basically the point of this video, to explain the concepts so you know exactly what's going on without Joel and his uh, ears and, and, and talking and stuff. Let's get into it. Right, for those of you really experienced at synthesis and synthesis and synthesizing and serum and all that sort of stuff, it's nice and simple. It's a sawtooth wave with an envelope, envelope two here on a low pass filter, a reasonably steep low pass filter. So it's opening up the low pass filter, standard stuff. And then you're automating the amount for that envelope and that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So the envelope is opening more and more and more over time. And then you're also automating the cutoff position the neutral position of that low pass filter. And on top of that, you are also, also, also automating the amount of unison detune. And you can see those automation lanes above. Ooh, ooh, ooh see, ooh, ooh, they're all going upwards. And then down here, more to one amount, unison detune, filter cutoff, and so on. Also reverb in Serum, just the standard settings, it's somewhat arbitrary. And then a ping pong delay and a bit of arbitrary EQing. For those hardcore synthesis people, that should be all the information you need. But let me break it down for those of you who may be a little bit newer to the world of making sounds, pressing buttons and noises coming out. Right, cheers. So I'm gonna deconstruct it backwards and then rebuild it back up, explaining the important concept about this whole dead mouse pluck thing, which to be honest, isn't actually a signature sound and Joel even says so in the video, again, that I'll link to below. What makes dead mouse dead mouse is not the sounds he uses, but the emotion in the melodies, the chord progressions and the arpeggios. That is the magic of dead mouse. And I suppose his judgment in the sounds he uses even though those sounds by themselves aren't that interesting or unique as sounds. Coolies, righteous. So let's deconstruct this thing. I will do it from over here. So we'll turn off the EQ8. That's just doing a bit of arbitrary EQing, changing the balance of frequencies. See what I mean? It's pretty arbitrary and it depends on the mix and how you just want it to sound. Then there's a ping pong delay. That gives you that ping ponging delay. See what I mean? Now to go off on a little bit of a tangent, that ping pong delay is actually doing something conceptually useful because you're playing an arpeggio, a sequence of individual notes. When you then add a delay to it, what that means is you end up essentially playing chords because you don't just have the note you're playing, you have a bit of the previous note and then also a bit of the previous previous note happening. Therefore, at each moment in time, it's not just one note, it's a chord of notes and that makes it more harmonically or musically interesting. <laughs> And I'll turn off the reverb as well, just deconstructing it so you can see how it's put together with reverb. See how the reverb is that echo, it's that space, it's putting that synthetic sound into a real space and making it sound more real and also filling up the gaps in the mix. It's taking that single sound and filling in all the little gaps in the distance. Bing, but I'll turn that off. Whoop, 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 click. <laughs> Cool, so let me explain the super, super, super fundamental concept of this sound, the heart of it all. All that stuff I've just turned off is sparkle. It's a bit of interest at the end. It's not the most important bit. The most important bit 
is right now. What I've got is a sawtooth wave going through a filter. So sawtooth wave going through a filter. I've chosen a slightly steeper low pass filter as did Joel, as you can see in the video. So low pass filter. <laughs> And you can see it's wobbling around like a maniac. The reason why it's wobbling around like a maniac is we've assigned an envelope to it, in this case, envelope two, with a plucky shape. You can adjust the ADSR, the attack, sustain, decay, release, to taste. Oh, in fact, I'm gonna turn off the unison because that is probably destroying my CPU. I will come back to that in a little bit. See how it's gotten less thick, but I'll get back to that in a sec. Let's focus on the filter. Basically, as you trigger a note, the envelope triggers and you move through that envelope shape. And as I slow down the BPM, you can see more clearly what's happening. So I'll turn down the BPM to like 20 BPM. Ooh, ooh, mouse went to the top. Do you see what's happening now? Every time a MIDI note is being triggered, it's going through that envelope, which of course you can change. Importantly though, this envelope is modulating, fancy word for changing, it's modulating the low pass filter in Serum. Look at what's happening in the filter section as each note is triggered and also with what's happening in the envelope at the same time. See how the envelope is triggering the low pass filter? This is of course slowed down an awful lot. In reality, happens much faster. So you can't really see it necessarily, but it's moving really, really fast and that gives you the plucky sound. Also, you may have noticed that depending on where you are in the track, the filter is going to be moving through a different range of frequencies. See how at the beginning of the phrase, it's a bit lower down and then it opens up a bit more and higher up. And that's the sound opening up the unit. And that's the other key part that you hear in the dead mouse sound. It's something opening up more and more over time. Now, this isn't something that only dead mouse is doing, but it is something he somewhat popularized years and years and years ago. To actually program that in, you use something called automation, which is specific to your DAW in terms of how you program it and stuff. I won't get into that in this video, but basically what you need to do is automate, fancy word for change, in your DAW, the controls over time. So what I want you to do is notice how, first of all, the cutoff position of the filter is increasing over time. So the resting neutral position of the filter. Oh, I'll start at the beginning. Click. See how it starts off where my mouse is now, and then it opens up more and more and more, the neutral position. You can see that in the bottom automation lane. And then the other important bit about this envelope that's being automated is the amount of that envelope. So as the phrase evolves, the envelope is opening more and more and more. Again, this is exactly what Joel did in the video and it's what he does in a lot of his tracks. The automation lane responsible for that is the top one. You can see serum modulation one amount. Great stuff. The final thing he did is modulate the amount of detune for Unison. What Unison does is take a single sound and make lots of versions of it, lots of instances, lots of voices is the technical term of that sound. So you take, say, the simple sawtooth sound you see in oscillator A, and if you crank the Unison to 16, you see all these different lines, and then you're creating, oh no, no, click. So you see you're creating 16 different versions of that sawtooth sound, and then you're detuning them relative to each other, so changing the pitch a tiny amount. The result of which is if you take all these different voices and detune them, they interact with each other, creating a thick sound, and that's the choir effect you hear. As Joel says in the video, it's not like a high unison number, it's better than a low unison number. It's just something which in some situations is cool, other situations, maybe not so cool. But yes, that is everything you need to know about the dead mouse pluck. You don't have to use Serum necessarily. Serum certainly sounds better than most other synthesizers. It's the concept that's important and you can apply this concept to digital analog and any other VSD synth you can possibly imagine. Take a sawtooth sound, apply an envelope to a low pass filter and then automate the parameters on that envelope and filter to open up more and more over time. Everything else is just details to sparkle it up and make it a bit more effective.
and stuff. I've been Multiplier. I will catch you guys on the flippity flip. Yeah.